Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at the cardiac conduction system. What is it that makes the heart beat? Well, we know it's an electrical conduction system. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the names and locations of this electrical conduction system to allow our heart to beat those 100,000 times per day or around about 3 billion times in our lifetime. Let's take a look. All right, so to begin, we need to understand the fact that in my videos, when I do uh, cardiac physiology, you'll see that I draw the heart up many different ways. This is the way I draw it up when I do conduction, when I'm talking about the electrical system of the heart. It's important to understand the electrical system of the heart for a number of reasons. The electrical system is how we propagate a signal through the heart. The whole purpose of the heart is to act as a pump. Right? I've told you that blood will enter into the atria, move down through the atria into the ventricles, and then when it contracts, the blood will exit the ventricles to go to the lungs if it's the right-hand side, or the body if it's the left-hand side. That means we need an, uh, what we call a rhythmic contraction. We need the atria to contract first, and then wait, and the ventricles to contract second. Why do we need to wait? So that there's enough time for the blood to move from the atria to the ventricles. And then a nice strong contraction for the uh, muscle to contract around the ventricles for the blood to exit. Because remember, these arteries, so the vessels allowing for the blood to leave the ventricles, they're basically up, superior. They, you need to push the blood upward. It's like taking a toothpaste container and trying to get the toothpaste out. You're trying to contract from down up, and I'll show you that in a second. So we need to understand that. Second thing is the conduction system's important when you do an ECG or EKG. I've done a video on ECG, EKG. That's a future video, but it allows for you to identify where there might be some issues if there's some cardiac abnormalities. All right, so to begin, we need to first start off with where does the heart begin its contraction? Because remember, it does not require any outside what we call extrinsic innovation for the heart to contract. Meaning I could effectively pull a Indiana Jones Temple of Doom and pull your heart out and it will, at least for a short period of time, beat by itself because it's got what we call automaticity or automatic rhythm. It can do it by itself. And it begins here in the right atrium. Specifically, it begins in the top right hand back corner of the right atrium. There is a group of specialized cardiac cells called the SA node. So SA stands for sinoatrial node and sometimes just referred to as the SA node. So they're not normal cardiac muscle cells, nor are they normal neurons. They are specialized cardiac cells called nodal cells. They're around about a couple of millimeters uh, uh, wide, uh, 15 millimeters thick sort of thing or long. So it's not that big, millimeters, right? It sets its own rhythm. Now I've done a video on the cardiac conduction, right? It mean cardiac action potential, sorry, telling you that it sets its own rhythm, firing off spontaneously. So it starts off here. When it fires off, it's sending that wave of depolarization or that electrical signal out in this fashion. It fires it out like this. So when you have the SA node firing off, now remember the SA node can fire off around about 60 to 80 times per minute, right? So that's the heart rate. Setting that heart rate. Sinus, so it's the sinus or sinoatrial node, it's setting the sinus rhythm, the base rhythm of the heart, 60 to 80 beats per minute, right? So let's write that as a, it, it's a, because it's firing off that many times, it gives you your heart rate of 60 to 80 beats per minute. And it's firing off in this fashion. So this electrical signal that's firing off will be spread to the muscles. So this is the muscle, right? Here's the atria, here's the muscles. It gets spread to the muscles and tells the muscles to then contract, squeezing the atria, allowing the blood to move down from the atria to the ventricles. I haven't drawn up the valves here because this is just about conduction. So that's the first thing. Next thing that happens is this. You can see I've drawn up this fibrous tissue here. This is actually called fibrous cardiac tissue. And it separates the top of the heart from the bottom of the heart, right? Important because there is another group of nodal cells that sit around about here. And they're called the AV 
node, right? So this is called the atrio ventricular node or the AV node. Now, very similar to the SA node, it can, it can spontaneously fire off, can set its own rhythm, which is around about 40 to 60 beats per minute, so a lot slower. So it doesn't fire off as quickly as the SA node, but it can do. But here's the thing, right? When the SA node fires off and spreads its wave of depolarization or electrical signal through this um, atrial muscle, it stops at this fibrous tissue. It doesn't let it propagate through. That's important. So it all has to funnel through the AV node. And that gives it a bit of a pause. So it's something like 0.1 or point. Yeah, about 0.16-ish of a second, it pauses, right? Meaning it's actually sending the signal, it takes a little while to move the conduction signal through. But once it does move through, it then moves through another, now what we call a fiber, not another nodal cell, it's fiber. This is, this is a, a, a fiber. This is what we call the uh, AV or atrioventricular bundle. So this is the AV bundle. Where am I gonna write it? I'll write it over here. AV bundle, but the AV bundle splits after a little while to form the left and right bundle branches. So these are the bundle branches. So these are the bundle branches. So again, an electrical signal sent down, splits into two. These bundle branches actually, especially the left one will send electrical signals firing off in that direction. That's important when it comes to understanding an ECG. And then by the time it gets to the apex, so this is called the septum, by the way, this middle part. So the uh, AV bundle and the bundle branch fibers go down the septum. When they get to the apex of the heart, so the tip of the heart, this is when they turn into what we call Purkinje fibers. And these Purkinje fibers have a lot of branches. Right? So this is the way that the Purkinje fibers sort of branch off. So let's label them Purkinje fibers, named after someone Purkinje. And so these fibers are very quick, a lot faster than the nodal cells and these bundle fibers. These Purkinje fibers can send a signal as fast as 1.5 to 4 meters per second. That's how fast they can send that signal. And they actually have their own automatic rhythm as well, which is around about 15, around about 15 to 40 beats per minute. So you can see there's actually three different areas of the heart that can set its own rhythm. The SA node at 60 to 80 beats per rhythm, uh, minute, sorry. The AV node at six, uh, 40 to 60 beats per minute. And the Purkinje fibers at 15 to 40 beats per minute. Now, it's sent this electrical signal everywhere now. And as you can see, as it sends an electrical signal down here and fires off here and then up, that's like you squeezing that tube of toothpaste from bottom up. We wanna squeeze the ventricles like this so the blood can squirt up and away. This side's gonna squirt it through the pulmonary artery, this side's gonna squirt it through the aorta, right? So that's how we, so that's the conduction system. Now it's, it's really important to understand this that our heart rhythm, our base rhythm is set by the SA node. It's not set by the AV node. It's not set by the Purkinje fibers, even though they can do it. Why is it that we rely on this one? Why aren't these taking over? Well, because this one fires off more often than these ones, it just overrides it, right? So if this didn't work, then yes, we'll then rely on the AV node, right? Because it will fire off 40 to 60 times per minute. If that didn't work, we'd have to rely on the Purkinje fibers. Problem is, AV and, Purkin AV and Purkinje, probably not going as fast as we need to be able to perfuse or send enough blood to the rest of the body. So we really need that SA node to fire off nicely. That's why the SA node is known as our pacemaker. It's setting the pace of the heart. So there's that. So this is what's happening by itself. You don't need any extrinsic innovation. But the thing is, we do have extrinsic conversations or ways to tell it to speed up or slow down. Because as you know, you're not always just at rest. Sometimes you need to speed the heart up when you do exercise or you get scared. And sometimes you need to slow the heart down when it's time to rest and relax. So we have ways of speeding up and slowing it down. This is the autonomic 
nervous system, right? So the autonomic nervous system we know is the sympathetic nervous system, also known as, as the fight and flight system, right? And we also have the parasympathetic, para sympa nervous system. So that's fight or flight, that's rest and digest. So what happens is the parasympathetic uh, neurons, they can come down and they will innervate the SA node and they will innervate the AV node and they will innervate the ventricular muscles. Basically, they innervate all aspects of the heart. So that's important because if you stimulate the sympathetic neurons, right? Remember, fight or flight. So you get scared or you do an exercise or whatever it might be, it increases the rate of the sinoatrial node. So your heart rate goes up. So this results in an increase in heart rate because it increases the firing off of the SA node and the AV node. But here's the other thing, it also tells the muscles to contract harder. So it also increases contractility. So if you've ever been scared, and I'm sure you have, you'll find that not only does your heart rate go up, but the force of contraction of your heart goes up, and that's because it's stimulating sympathetic neurons. I'll tell you how, okay, I'll tell you now how it does this, right? So sympathetic neurons release, what do they release? Noradrenaline, right? So the sympathetic nervous system will release noradrenaline. Now, if you're in the US, you probably call it norepinephrine, that's fine. The noradrenaline, when it gets to all these locations, what it does is this. So first, let's start with the nodal cells. Here's a nodal cell action potential, right? So what you need to, if you haven't done action potentials yet, I have done a video on cardiac action potentials, which you can watch, I'll put it in the description below. Otherwise, what you need to understand is this. When we hit this negative 40, the nodal cell will fire off, all right? How do we hit negative 40? What's that red thing? That red thing is sodium, and we need to throw sodium into the cell, right? In addition to that, we need it to hit the peak for it to fire off fully, you need this blue thing, this blue thing is calcium. So you need calcium to also enter the cell. So what do we do to allow an SA node and AV node to fire off? What, what we need is we need to throw sodium and calcium inside of them. Sodium and calcium inside. So what the sympathetic nervous system does when it innovates it, noradrenaline opens up sodium and calcium channels, making it fire off more quickly. Brilliant. What about the muscle? How did it tell the muscle to contract? Well, it tells the muscle to contract by also sodium and calcium. But here's the thing. Here is the myocyte. So that's the nodal cell. This is the muscle of the heart, what we call the myocardiocyte, right? So this is how we tell the muscle to contract. Again, what do we need? We need the red is sodium needs to enter. That's cool because we said that we do that with the sympathetic. And here, this thing here, what we call the plateau is where calcium is entering. Remember, when calcium enters a muscle, the muscle contracts. So thankfully, the sympathetic nervous system through noradrenaline opens calcium channels. So that's how it tells the myocytes to contract harder for contractility. So what you could argue is this. The sympathetic tells the heart rate to go up mostly through sodium entering and calcium entering. But it tells the heart muscle to increase its contractility by telling calcium. To enter. We can even write it like this, right? So say contractility by that and heart rate by sodium and calcium. But the other thing is we've got the sympathetic, which tells it to slow down. And I'm just going to grab another pen. So let's have a look. I'm going to do this in purple. So let's do parasympathetic in purple, right? We've got parasympathetic. So it will send vagal, vagal branches, so the vagus nerve, right? Branches of the vagus nerve. It will send it and it only sends it off to the SA node and to the AV node. It does not send it off to the muscle. It only goes to the SA node and the AV node. Now, it tells them to slow down. 
So how could we inhibit, so we're only looking at nodal cells, right? Because that's all it innovates. How could I tell this to slow down? Well, anything, remember I said, anything that brings it into the positive tells it to fire off, right? Anything that brings it to that positive. Anything to bring it down will tell it to slow down. So what's causing that slope? Potassium efflux, telling potassium to leave the cell. And that's what parasympathetic does, remember. So parasympathetic doesn't release noradrenaline, it releases acetylcholine. And the acetylcholine that's being released opens potassium channels and the potassium leaves, making it less likely to fire off, slowing it down. So that's the conduction system and how we can control it. I'm Dr. Mike, I hope that helps. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you wanna contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic, at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.